All right, thank you all for being here. Good morning. Um, I put it on uh, Instagram Live too, so people could see remotely. I know that's kind of the new day and age now, right? Yeah. Where people are taking online classes and people are. Oh yeah, I forgot that it's an online course. Yeah, so I did both. I think it's more fun in person. Uh, I felt like last time I um, kind of left our online eco friends hanging, you know. Yeah. But being here, you get to see it. Um, I'll try to be more interactive today with the online following, and then um, yeah, so we'll get started. So. A little bit about me. I'm sure you all met me at the stores, right? I'm, I've seen you all before, and then people online too. Um, you know, I'm just the guy always talking about like how these products at EcoNow are so great because we could recycle our water with it, right? And then, um, you know, just uh, it's like the water recycling is um, this is huge because we live in California, right? So we want to save water any which way we can. A lot of people talk about reducing water consumption. Um, a lot of people, you know, like cities give out rebates and uh, incentives for people to get high efficiency washer, washers and um, laundry machines and dishwashers and all that. But um, great water recycling is uh, something that's getting more mainstream now. Um, I think. Uh, sorry, add some notes, but. Just waiting for Tay to get back. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We, we got hit with a curveball today, but you know life happens. Um, yeah, and I, and then uh, I love uh, being at Orange Homegrown too. You know, have you all been to Orange Homegrown before? Yeah, it's pretty amazing, right? We got refills at um, with olive oil. We could refill on the home and body products, which is why this class I feel like is so important because uh, we can reuse our water. Um, some things I wanted to talk about is like, uh, do you all know what gray water recycling is for the most part? Yeah, kind of. Yeah, so gray water recycling, uh, I'm sure, have you all heard of uh, reclaimed water? Yes. Yeah, so reclaimed water is different than gray water recycling, being that uh, reclaimed water is um, slightly treated water. It goes through municipal water treatment facility, but isn't uh, cleaned enough to be potable. So. Um, you see, you see like uh, the purple signs on streets and freeways, right? Yeah, so you've never seen that? So the purple signs you see like in landscapes and cities uh, are generally uh, are, uh, reclaimed water. So when you see that, you know it's like recycled water through the city, goes through the treatment plan, uh, not as effective as like tap water, but it's enough to be used on landscape. Gray water is different being that gray water is um, water you could use, gently use from your uh, laundry washer, sink, or shower. Uh, so those are the main sources for gray water. Um, the other sources for like black water is a uh, dishwasher, kitchen sink, and um, dish dishwasher, kitchen sink, and what else? Toilet, right? That's probably the most obvious one, right? Yeah. So. When it goes through that's black water. I know some people think like you could probably use kitchen and dishwasher water for gray water, but uh, the reason why you can't use it is because there's pathogens growing in it. You know, it's not like an effective compost pile when it goes through the garbage disposal or your food goes down it. It's like uh, bad bacteria would eat it. You know, I know composting has a lot of good bacteria, but when it comes to water, it could get mixed with some pathogens. So that's why we don't use. Um, Kitchen, kitchen sink and dishwasher water for gray water. Okay. Yeah. You know? uh, do you all have any questions with what gray water is so far? Um. So, <clears throat> you know, I've looked at like having like an entire house run mm -hmm. on like gray water. Right. So you wouldn't. You could like use your shower. Um, Sorry. No. Can I see your phone? Yeah. yeah. I just need notes, but yeah, yeah go on. You can use your like shower water with that. Um, so then, the, what you were saying about the dishwasher, that type of stuff, that wouldn't be connected if you had like that. Yeah, so your question is, um, you wanted to convert your house to gray water right. recycling, but you want to see what sources you could divert from, whether it be, uh, primarily the main uses is like your uh, bathroom sink and your bathroom shower, right? Yeah, and also laundry. Laundry, I say, is probably the easiest. But um, if you wanted to do that, the main thing is, is your house on a raised level or is it on a... 
theoretical for like building your own building and like building a house. So, okay. It's theoretical. Yeah, so if you were to get a house and convert it or find one that has it, uh, I think the most ideal one would be a house with a raised foundation okay. because you want to count on a gravity drain for that, you know? If it's on a concrete slab foundation, then you're going to have to jackhammer it at a pump. Um, if, you're, if your landscape goes upward, your house is more downslope, it's going to be really hard to get achieve that. So when you're getting a house, consider those factors where your house is like on a raised um, foundation and then also if it's above like the landscape area. Yeah, great question though. And I was gonna touch touch more touch base on that more. Um, let's see. Let me get back on track here. Anyone have questions on uh, the live? Feel free to chime in, and I'll try to catch them as you say them. Cool. Let me just pull up my notes here. And then. Um, here we go. So we're going to be more structured now. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, everyone today gets a raffle ticket. I'm going to be raffling off this um, off-grid washing machine. I made it at home. It's from the upcycled closed loop buckets uh, that we retired from our um, from our stores, right, at Eco now. So we have a closed loop system. Once these buckets, uh, we get in excess of them or overuse them, then uh, I convert them to compost buckets or even like these gray water machines. Um, this plunger though is not secondhand, so you all know you're not going to get a dirty plunger with this. <laughs> so I think that's one of the things I was being very cautious of, you know? Yeah, I get that. You know, so you might get some soap uh, residue on it, but these off-grid washers are great. Uh, this is like a pretty standard design if you go on YouTube. Um, you can see how to make one and it's usually like, you just need an agitator, a drain, um, a drainage bucket and a bucket to catch your water and then to drain it out. Some people put like bulkhead screws to put an actual spigot faucet on there so you could connect a water hose and you could line it up. So if you're really off grid, this is a good route to go or urban homesteading, it's also great. But if you're going camping, I think this has a lot of good applications. And if you're not interested in today, uh, you know, just humor me, but then let me know afterwards. Like maybe you can give it to someone else. You know, it's kind of funky, but so so is gray water too, right? Um, so yeah, you all each get a ticket. Am I handing this? Cool. And then um, we're also gonna be giving out free worm tea today. So I brought my big five gallon bucket of worm tea. I made it at home. You all get free refills and then um, anyone online too, they'll get uh, a free pint of worm tea that I'll ship to them and I'll raffle that off too. Just to incentivize people tuning in on live. Cool. So let's get into the meat of things. So I'm sure, have you all heard of uh, my Pipeworks account? It's kind of like an extension of Eco now. Yeah, so it's like our Eco Home Services where I'll, um, where you can communicate with me directly on how to get gray water systems or composting systems so you could have a really zero waste home. Um, and you know, it all ties into Eco now because those products wouldn't be possible or using those devices wouldn't be possible unless you had sustainable alternatives, right? You can't just be using um, like Tide or Clorox in your washing machine and go to your garden, right? Because it'll just kill everything, turn everything to so sand and uh, you have a beach instead of a garden, yeah? Cool, and then, um, so how do we equate sustainability, right? We usually equate it by water usage, that's the main one. Uh, like you hear about like how there's more sustainable toilet paper where uh, it takes less water to make or using con fabric that uses less water. Um, so it's some, some simple uh, resources, carbon emissions too. Like just those elements where like how much carbon it takes to transport an item. You know, I've heard like glass is pretty heavy. So when you're buying glass, it's not always the most eco-friendly alternative because like glass package products because the weight of it produces more carbon emissions versus aluminum, you know? So I don't know, you could always, uh, it's like apples and oranges, but uh, aluminum is recyclable if it's CRV. 
and then uh, renewable sources too. So making sure you get products that have renewables are made from renewable sources. Like you can see, um, Eco now has like these hair ties I've noticed, or like the sunglasses too, where it's made from plant acetate. So that's a renewable source, even though it mimics plastic, it's still more eco-friendly because it may not break down the way you'd I, like in a compost pile, but it, at least you know it's not going to hurt your, the environment. And then, um, you know, just buying local ties all the stuff together, you know, less carbon emissions, less water usage, less resources being used to bring it to you. Um, and then we talked about gray water, you know, there's so many different kinds of water, right? There's like alkaline water, uh, mineral water, you know, sea water. Uh, black water, but we already talked about how gray water differs from reclaimed water, being that it's just gently used water that doesn't have to go through municipal recycling. Um, so the legality behind it, in California, gray water recycling is legal at your house. Uh, for building codes, you just want to have an option, you need to have an option where you can black water it. Usually people have like a T-pipe connector where you turn it, it goes to one valve which goes to the sewage or another valve where it goes to your garden. Um, the easiest way to, if you don't have earth or land, uh, you can just have it go straight to your toilet tank. And I'll talk about that more too. Um, there's no really city rebates or incentives yet, unfortunately. You know, hopefully if this gets more mainstream, then we can get more, um, you know, rebates from cities where you can get your house converted to gray water recycle. And then even rain barrels, it's so weird, like rain barrels just became legal too. I saw, I see like LA uh, Water Sanitary District gives out rain barrels uh, to their residents. But I remember before it wasn't legal, you know? The city wanted the water and they needed the water and fill, refill the basin, so I think that's why they did it. But because we're in such a drought, it's kind of like, we need to take care of ourselves and avoid water going down the runoffs. Yeah. How does the rain barrel work? Yeah, it's kind of like um, this design. So you pretty much get like a large, I've seen people use trash cans, um, you know, just plastic trash cans. I think something galvanized or plastic's ideal because if it's wood, it will rot. You know, it, like if you have a Jack Daniels barrel, you know, you don't want it to leak or get um, start its own form of composting. Um, you know, uh, I think if you get something that's like iron or rust, it will break down. So you want to get like a, like at Eco now, actually get, we get um, closed loop uh, 55 gallon barrels. You know, I'm sure you've seen in our stores how we have like the vinegar, the dish soap. So we usually close the loop on that, but if we ever have like retired ones, I made some rain barrels for my friends too, and that's something I also offer uh, to make for people. Essentially what you do is you get, you create a spigot or drill a hole at a spigot. You want one as low as possible so you can drain all the water. But I've seen some designs where they have one kind of like, uh, like 20 gallons above, like a third of the way. Oh, you know, so yeah, just so just so you could drain some of it without having it elevated, because it's hard to have the gravity drain out. And if you want to get the very last drip of it, then you have a spigot at the bottom to drain it out completely. So just imagine another spigot here where you could drain out most of it and then save some for later. You know, and use gravity. You have a question? Yeah, I think it's hard because you're very dependent on um, rain in California. I know it felt like we've had some rainy days here, but overall we're still in a drought and um, it takes forever forever to wait for that rain to come in. And uh, Taya's question was, uh, how long would it take to fill a 55 gallon drum? It's all based on surface area too, so if there is rain, uh, if you have a large roof and you, it's well guttered and well drained, you could capture all that water from the surface area of your roof to go down a gutter straight into your rain barrel. And I've seen some designs where people collect even more than 55 gallons where they'll add, um, like maybe this will be a good example. Or they have two 55 gallons and then once it gets full, there's a connecting pipe where it'll, it won't overflow. It'll start filling up the next one. That's kind of how some septic tanks work too, you know? Um, that's the idea, how you can capture more and you can keep scaling that up. Uh, you probably want it on an elevated surface so you can use gravity to drain in, uh, use your rain water for your garden. Is anybody here more interested in the gardening part than zero waste part? Uh, raise, raise your hands for zero waste. 
Raise your hands for gardening. No. Yeah, I mean it goes hand in hand, you know. Like, you don't want to waste water. You want you want to reuse resources. And um, if you're at the composting class or checked it out last time, then you see like how your garden could become your trash can, your water drain, and your grocery store. You know, so you never have to leave your house essentially. <laughs> um, but yeah, and there's some mainstream applications. So. Uh, gray water recycling isn't some like backwoods thing anymore or like you live on a cabin you gotta you know survive the elements live off the land kind of thing uh, at the Phoenix waste management Phoenix open or first could I ask uh, does anyone like golfing here yeah does, are there any wives that hate golfing because of their husband yeah <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah so golf the if you've heard of waste management Phoenix open it happened a couple months ago uh, there are zero waste golf uh, tournament because they use the kitchen water and scraps to compost and feed their grass um, at, at the golf tournament. Um, waste management did a really good job doing that event to be zero waste. I'm sure there's a stigma with like gardeners where like lawns are just wasted space, like big water takers. Um, they don't add pollination for bees and biodiversity, you know? Yeah, golf courses could be the worst, right? Because so, it's just a giant lawn. But um, when you when you see how waste management does it, they've been doing it for 10 years now. Uh, they've they've reused over 45,000 gallons of gray water from their kitchens to feed their uh, golf courses, and then uh, they saved like I think around like 50 million um, gallons of water for the nature around it because it is a desert environment, you know. So they're not siphoning water from uh, like the Colorado River or other river or waterways. And has anyone seen the Colorado River recently? Yeah, so it's getting so depleted. You can see the bleached rocks. Uh, it's just unnatural. It looks white. It looks kind of cool if you're not aware of like why it shouldn't look like that. It's kind of like when you see a sunset and the pollution, it creates like a purple haze, right? Oh. <laughs> but when you see like the water dropping, the rocks are bleached. They're not um, conditioned for that sunlight. And um, yeah, it just shows how much water we're taking from our natural waterways. Yeah, that's just some uh, mainstream things and some things you notice uh, that's happening around us where it's, it is getting more mainstream and you can feel good knowing that like waste management and golf courses, they are transforming more to that. And if you do have a lawn too, you could use gray water for that. Um, so we already talked about the common sources of gray water. Some common sources of black water, again, is like a kitchen sink, dishwasher, toilet, mainly due to pathogens. You don't want that going into your garden or into your landscape. And then, um, where can we divert gray water? So there's some examples where you can get tap water from shower heating up to put in your garden or your laundry machine or indoor plants. You know, um, and the reason why I say tap water is because it's not been treated yet, right? You're just essentially putting a like a bucket or a water collector um, in the shower or the water water that would go down the drains just filling that up while it's heating up if you like hot showers you know uh, so you could do that and then you could put that in your laundry machine too because laundry machine goes through some cycles so you don't need perfectly clean water right off the bat um, even if it bounces off your body and collects in there like it's still like your laundry water you know so you would like just pour it into your washing machine yeah and it wouldn't drain because there's a cycle where wa washing machines, like, they drain, right? So it would collect the water and it has a sensor where it fills up. Uh -huh. So sometimes uh, when I don't want to, like, water all my plants or garden with that, um, I just put it in the washing machine. So instead of the washing machine filling up, like, let's say 10 gallons, it fills up 5 gallons because you already put 5 gallons of water in there. That's one way to save water, you know? And I know water is pretty cheap too, you know, it's not like you're going to be saving uh, like thousands of dollars doing this, but it's just the eco-friendly part of it and we're using water. And then if you have your la laundry machine go into the garden, that's an added bonus. Yeah, so I don't know if I repeated your question, but you're saying like um, if, if you can use your add water to a laundry machine, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So you can, you know? It just, it, the sensor will trigger once it's full. So you can put as much as you want. You just probably don't want to overflow it. And then, um, and it shouldn't overflow unless you manually put over, like let's say it's a 10 gallon capacity, you put like 12 gallons, then it's gonna overflow, but you'll probably notice it. <laughs> um, 
So yeah, I wanted to shout out Zatik because uh, we sell their hand and body soaps. They're great water safe. Um, so if you do have a drainage from the shower, using gravity drain underneath your foundation uh, to go to your garden, you can feel comfortable using direct shower water from that as well. Or if it splashes off into your bucket that you put in your laundry machine or straight to your garden or save it for later. Even re if you shut off the water in your toilet tank and refill the toilet tank with that, that works too, you know? A little more maintenance with that, but just know it's an option for you. Um, let's see. So using foam soaps help too when you're doing hand, like bathroom sinks, um, especially when you're using the um, toilet sink. I'm not sure if you've been to our stores and you've seen like the toilet sink attachments, um, where where it go, sits on top of your toilet. I'll use this example. I probably told some of you about how uh, toilet sinks work, right? Yeah, so toilets are a great, like, source of, um, let's see. They use them in Japan a lot. Yes. Yeah, yeah they're very popular in Japan. They, um, they're great space savers. Like, if you live in an RV, um, it's a great option, too, because you don't want to have an extra sink in there. It takes up more space. But if you convert your toilet to where you can wash your hands after you flush the toilet, then it refills the tank with the water from it. It's essentially like this model where... Let me see if I could get this all in here. So I made this at home, but this is the same idea as like the toilet sink. Imagine this uh, top being added to the top of your toilet, replace the lid of your toilet with it. And then this is your toilet tank, so just imagine that. So when you um, wash your hands, I made this off grid too, so. So you can even make this at home too, where you have like an off-grid hand washer. But you get more of a continuous flow with the toilet because what it does is it diverts the refill valve from um, your toilet to this faucet. And then you can um, collect the gray water into your toilet. It sits in there, but that's why I mentioned using like a foam pump helps because you won't get like that buildup. Even if you get that build up, not much plumbing issues come from it. Um, you, I haven't had any issues. I've been using it for a couple years now at home and in our stores, so that's how we save water. We have all the, we have the sink attachment, so our team members wash their hands afterwards, um, you know, after they flush. And it's cold water too, because it's tap, but you don't really need hot water to wash your hands effectively, you know? Uh, the reason why hot water is good is because the heat of it loosens, uh, you know, it's like when it, whenever you add heat to something, it loosens uh, like physical matter, right? But when you have soap, it spreads the germs out. Like I'm sure you've seen like during the pandemic, how you see a bowl with like pepper in it and then you put a drop of soap and it all spreads out, right? So that's how it works with germs. So if you just have good soap, it, it always works. And let me just answer this question too. So, Francois asks, is this at the Anaheim location? Yeah, we do sell the toilet sinks at our Anaheim location and our Costa Mesa and Riverside location. Uh, if you ever need help installing it too, I'm able to assist. I've done like FaceTime calls before. I just want you all to feel confident in the product. And then um, the market today is open till 1 p.m. So you could always stop by and check everything out. Yeah, those are great questions. Any other questions with like um, using their toilet as like a great water source? I think the thing you gotta keep in mind too is like not all toilets are made like this, uh, where it's just a simple valve redirect. I'm sure you've seen like some low flow buttons, right? Or uh, like where it's like use less water or more water. Um, so our vendor, uh, Sing Twice, does make toilet tops to accommodate that. I'm just not too familiar with it because I, I haven't directly experienced a toilet like that yet, but just know you could have options for that. Also at our stores, we divert our laundry water to go um, into 
our toilet tank too. So just imagine like having the sink twice and then I drilled a little hole and I added the hose so the drain pump from the washing machine goes in there. So now our toilet tanks are filled with our sink and laundry water in there. So that's if you live in a more urban environment where you don't have uh, accessible lawn or garden or land, right? Um, and I rent at my apartment too. My landlord doesn't need to know about what I do in my house, you know, as long as I'm not violating codes or, you know, causing damage. But it's been working out really well for me. Uh, you know, with my, I, I literally have a patch of dirt this big and I have like tomatoes growing from it, from my laundry water. And then I have my toilet tank where my sink water goes to. Yeah, it's just some ideas like how there's uh, adaptations to if you live minimally, if you live in an apartment or house or RV or off-grid. Is so, uh, Nelly's laundry room, is it okay for gray water? Yeah, I was going to mention that too. So not all our products are gray water safe. Um, your question is, uh, is the Nelly's uh, laundry soda uh, gray water safe? And um, I would say it's not ideal and if you can't avoid it, you should do it. Because The reason why is because Nelly's is a uh, sodium bicarbonate salt base. Um, all that salt in your garden will, uh, yeah, it will turn your garden into a beach. You know, you'll see sand, and you don't really see much what like growth. Like beaches aren't exactly garden environments, right? You might see some kelp wash up, but you're not gonna see like tomatoes or berries and trees. Yeah. So that's the reason why I avoid like a lot of salts in my washer. Some aren't that bad, but I wouldn't do it as a gray water system. You know? Um, yeah, but that's a great question. I was gonna go down like some side notes too, mentioning like um, what products are good for that. And then gray water from your shower, uh, again, could be diverted on a raised foundation to your garden using gravity. If you had a slab foundation, concrete slab, it would, um, you need to jackhammer it, add a pump, just so it's way more involved and way more expensive than if you just have gravity. So if you're getting a house, keep that in mind. Raised foundation is more ideal for that reason. Um, and again, building codes need to have an option for black water, so you could just divert it. At my house, I just move my washing machine drain from one valve to another instead of a whole T thing. And then um, we got a question on our live: Are there any Earth Day deals? Uh, I'm not. I don't know at this time if we have any Earth deal Earth Day deals for these items, but our loyalty rewards program does. Uh, offer free pint and free quart of our laundry detergent, which uh, by Rune Splendor it is gray water safe. So I always recommend that because it's not salt based, it's uh, essential oil, glycerin, and uh, concentrated, so it dilutes naturally in the water and it's natural ingredients too. So the Rune Splendor laundry concentrate I've been having great success with with my garden. Um, and then the earth-friendly soaps and detergents, they're great in all instances in case, even if you don't have gray water, it's great to have because our water eventually goes through runoff and could lead back to our waterways and environment. We have some team members that work for Newport Bay Conservancy saying like all the nasty things they see come from the runoff into Newport Bay and I'm sure you've seen that pretty waterfall in Dana Point, right? Does anyone know what I'm talking about? It's not really a waterfall, it's like a runoff, but uh -huh. <laughs> it looks cool, but it's essentially the runoff from like our streets and water going back into the environment. So using these eco-friendly soaps do make a big difference. Um, and if you have a septic tank system, uh, I like to think of septic tanks as like a big compost bin. I know people have been conditioned to think we need to get it drained or cleaned, but it's honestly because there's no uh, microbes or life in there breaking things down because all the detergents we use are heavily preserved, uh, toxic, kill everything in there so nothing breaks down naturally. So if you have a septic tank, um, try to use eco-friendly soaps because you're essentially promoting bacteria, like probiotics in there, breaking down materials and enzymes to really avoid that because those septic tanks, the water eventually goes back into the landscape, right? It just goes through several filters where um, it gets built, you know, like the first, let me visualize it for you. Are y'all familiar with septic tanks? So if you get a house too, septic tanks are great because it is eco. It naturally filters through different chambers. So just like how I was talking about the 
uh, rainwater barrels. It's essentially that. You can DIY your own septic tank if, you're, if you have a cabin or something. But the first one collects all the black water and mixed water, so it's saturated with like uh, different materials. And then it has that chamber where it connects to another one, and then most of it gets caught there, so the next one is just less solids and more just dirty water. And then there's another tube that runs like 50 yards, I, I think, where it has hole drains and it naturally filters in the water, kind of like how you, if you have like charcoal in your Brita filters and all that. So it's the same thing, like it filters through the sediments and replenish, replenishes the groundwater. You ideally don't want to have edible plants growing on your septic system waterway uh, because you're essentially feeding it black water. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, but yeah, it's a. Uh, you, you don't want edible plants in your black, like septic water or touching the gray water too. So if you do use gray water for your garden, don't have like root vegetables, don't have uh, like squashes or pumpkins, those items touching the ground because the water that touches it, it is, it does look grayish, you know, and it is like from your laundry or sink. So you don't want to get contaminated, you know? But you can do edible plants if it's like on a vine or a tree, like uh, apples or tomatoes. As long as it's not touching the ground, it's gray water safe. Um, so that's what I would recommend. I think the biggest uh, plants that would benefit from gray water are bushes and fruit trees because they suck up a lot of water. Uh, some tomato plants, they're not going to collect all the water. Uh, it could get saturated, but it's okay too because you're saving water, you know? I just know with fruit trees and bushes, they'll, they'll suck up a lot of that water and your ground won't look saturated. And you do want to spread out the water evenly too so it doesn't become saturated. The issue with it becoming saturated is it's not necessarily bad for the environment, but just all the chlorine and tap water uh, inhibits bacterial growth and probiotics. So you're gonna have to replenish the organic material inside your garden if you do saturate it with gray water, uh, just because of the chlorine and the chemicals. And even though they're biodegradable and not harsh, it won't promote um, good soil to grow things. So that's why I say composting is always good, and that's why I brought my worm tea because I think it goes hand in hand. You want to regenerate organic material so you can have a good uh, yield on your garden. What's your question? Yeah, when well, you're talking about detergents, and um, so like, there's eco-friendly and good for plants doesn't necessarily mean the same thing, right? That's right. Okay. So your, your question is, uh, eco-friendly and like plant beneficial detergents aren't hand in hand. It's like biodegradable versus compostable, right? Like just because it could biodegrade doesn't mean it's gonna be eaten by your plants in your garden or microbes or earthworms, you know? Okay. So you want to get detergents that are biodegradable because it's safe for the um, soil, but doesn't necessarily mean it's going to feed your soil. You still need to have the organic material um, like composting, so, um, okay. you know, anything nutrient rich. Or even just bad for your soil, like the certain eco-friendly detergents that have too much salt exactly. are, are still better for the environment but not necessarily for your garden. Exactly. Okay. So the salt-based uh, eco-friendly detergents, sodium-based, um, they, they're good for the earth, right? They're not going to toxify any any waterways. I mean, like, the, the sea is filled with salt, right? But it's not ideal for your garden if you're trying to grow things, okay. you know? If you, if you're trying to grow anything really, too much salt could really turn it sandy. And then also to um, ha monitoring your soil to make sure it's not too acidic or basic, you know, just in the right right level is good. I think they sell meters for that. So if you use like vinegar as like a fabric softener, um, just use it in moderation. I've seen like some acidic soils benefit some plants, but uh, just know your ranges, know how much you're putting out, just monitor carefully. Any other questions with like gardening and gray water? Cool, and then let me check my notes. Yeah, uh, the thing too is like when you saturate uh, your garden with gray water, um, it's from tap water, so the chlorine can kill the microbes. Uh, you just want to replenish it, and you know. Also, if you use uh, water softeners, it's salt based. Some are salt salt based, so you want to be mindful of that. If you have a water softener machine in your house. 
make sure it's uh, not too heavy with the salt. You can probably monitor it, see if it works for you, but if it doesn't, maybe that could be the root of it, or you need to add too much salt. I think there's also some water softening machines that don't use salt, but I know salt's a good binding agent for the hard water. Um, fabrics too, so that's important. What kind of fabrics you use in your washer? Because uh, lint will get into your garden if you do use that route, uh, even in your toilet, but I haven't had any plumbing or clogging issues with that. Essentially, you just want to get like a filter, like a mesh bag, um, where it could catch all that, or you could wash your synthetics in uh, like a, we used to sell a guppy bag. You could kind of put it in a bag and then it catches the uh, lint like that. Um, ideally, you'd want to use like organic fabrics like hemp, cotton, um, cecil, stuff like that. I think they have like microplastic filters nowadays and like solid filters. Yeah, they do. Uh, like that, it's like an egg ball, right? No, not, not the not the coral ball. Or I don't know. Like I know Girlfriend has one. There's another company that I wanted to get. But like you just attach it and you just empty out the little microplastic. Wow. Yeah, I think they do have... Yeah, I'll look into that more, but um, you're, you're essentially saying that they have filters for microplastics in your washer. Which yeah, yeah, like you attach it to the pipe so when the water is like goes where it needs to go, it gets all it's swept in. Like, yeah, I think I've seen that too, where you could screw it and unscrew it into yeah. your, uh, excuse me, piping system. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, I've seen that too. I've seen it also for like rainwater too. Uh, like just general filters, you know. Um, but yeah, that will be good because you don't want synthetics going in your garden because it's microplastics and, um, you know, microplastics are kind of everywhere, so you just want to ease it, just don't get a heart attack, it, it eventually goes in there. <laughs> um, the other thing I was going to say too is um, rainwater is great for the garden. So if you use rainwater barrels, you don't have to worry about saturating it. Uh, your plants will love rainwater. The reason why is because there's no chlorine in it. It promotes bacterial growth, probiotics, and um, it's just the best option for your plants. Your plants will love it. And my, I know you, my oh, ninety year old grandmother or great aunt in Connecticut used to collect the rainwater and would water her garden the just would dump the Yeah, um, like pitcher. The pitcher and water her entire garden with the rainwater. But that was Connecticut, they get a lot more water. Yeah, so you you're pretty much saying like how your grandma would use um, a pitcher to scoop up rainwater in Connecticut where they get lots of rain and just water the garden. And I bet the garden was pretty green, right? A lot of blooming. Yeah, so if you can uh, try to invest in like, I don't know, you could get like a cheap trash can and just add a spigot to it. I could help with those services too or guide you. Um, yeah, collecting rainwater is always best for your garden and you could even hook it up to where you use it for your laundry machine or your sink or RV if you're like off-grid living kind of thing. Um, I've seen some washing machines using that, and I'm kind of interested in doing that too. But just keep in mind, like, bacteria, probiotics love it, but also pathogens like it too, because it promotes growth. So uh, you essentially want to clean it or bomb it, um, like your washer, if you use cold water with rainwater or other items too in your house, because uh, it will promote growth. And we sell some salt-based bombs, which are good, like, in moderation, but it's just using salt consistently will transform your garden to a beach. Got it. Yeah, but um, any other questions with uh, like rainwater related to great water? You have a question? Yeah. Yeah, so you do. A um, uh, question was um, Do you have to supplement your garden with other materials if you use solely gray water? And it's essentially what, it, what I kind of mentioned before using organic materials, like adding compost from like your worm bin or mulch or organic materials just to replenish it to add more microbes back into the soil because if you use tap water, it will kill the microbes. So I'd say like adding the organic materials from your compost helps reju rejuvenate the garden. And you want to add it at night too because microbes are sensitive to UV light. Like you probably learned from my compost class. Um, adding the compost early at night, like right after the sun sets, your bacteria will get acclimated to the environment and then 
it will be exponential how much you benefit your garden with that because there's life working in there versus just adding organic material, right? It's like um, it's like adding product into a store but not really having anyone there to work it or sell it, you know what I mean? <laughs> it's kind of like those Amazon stores where you kind of shop yourself, but it's, it just, it's not the same, you know? <laughs> You're missing like that team effect with your microbes. And then uh, to kind of conclude it, there's no perfect way to save water. Obviously just us living and breathing we're consuming, right? But we could do so with more intent, ease pressures off uh, municipal water sanitation districts, um, not affecting our waterways as much. Even just using more eco-friendly soaps day to day, uh, you can feel more confident that's benefiting your body, but also if it ever gets into the waterways. Um, you're not hurting the environment, you know, even if it is salt-based. Um, so the salt-based ones are great for that everyday use. You just want to live more clean and eco-friendly, but also toilet tanks too can take it. Just moderation of gardens. Yeah, any other questions? I kind of want to show how this off-grid washer works too. So this is what we do at my house um, to clean our baby's uh, cloth diapers. So I do it, essentially it's kind of like Amish style, right? Amish are pretty off-grid. You know, I don't think they use electricity. But it's like churning butter in a way. You have this agitator plumber with holes uh, so the water could escape it. But you just kind of mix, mix the clothes around in there like two to five minutes. Uh, we add vinegar to kill like any pathogens in there before we bring it to our gray water washer, which if you live in an apartment or somewhere more urban or you just want something minimal, portable washers are great options too. So you could go ahead and like Google it, uh, portable washers, they don't need a special plug to plug in. Um, they just use a regular outlet. And they're even good for RVs and off-grid living. They're just very, if you live in an apartment, I wish I would have known this in college. Uh, instead of using laundromats, <laughs> uh, portable washers are great, you know? But then, um, essentially the same idea with like uh, using the strain so you just uh, churn it you sift the water out and then you drain the water into your gray water or toilet or whatever have you I think these are great for camping and you could look up some designs online but I did want to raffle one off because I think it's a cool way to start gray watering and then if you go to our stores the sink slices are great options to convert your toilet into a gray water capture. Uh, does anyone have any questions online? I think uh, I'll check the transcript and I'll raffle off this pint of worm tea. And everyone here gets free worm tea as much as you want. Because I think last time I thought I'd run through it more, but this is actually a lot of worm tea, so I had a lot left over. I just fed it to my garden after. Yeah, um, am I handing a raffle ticket to people in the back? Just one each. Cool, so I'll raffle off the off-grid washer. If you if you don't want it, just uh, just let me know and then we could re-raffle. Or does anyone want it? Anyone? Alright, you three? Yeah, alright, so we'll do it like that. I'll just use Tay to help me because I don't want to use Google again. But um, we're going to do two digits, so... Actually, what digit? What's the first digit on your card, or the second to last digit? The second to last. Mhm. Mm four. Four. So everyone's on four, and you're five. Oh, you have five too. Okay. So what I'll do is this will be five, and this will be four. Back side's four, top side's five. <laughs> I don't have a coin, so. So front side was five, right? Um, All right, so you two are in. And then what's your two numbers? That was the eight. One? Five, one. Oh, so one, and then what's your last number? Zero. All right, so this will be zero, and this will be one. Oh, you're in two? Oh, and two, okay. So that switches things up. Let's see. Split in half? I don't have the double ones. Yeah, so I gotta do it this way. Yeah. Thanks for being patient. <laughs> Try to be more resourceful. 
Alright, I'm gonna use a random number generator. Yeah, and y'all stay tuned so I could see who gets the free pint. But yeah, the number is two. Anyone have two? Okay, so you win it. Yeah. Keep in mind, this is not upcycled plunger, so it's a clean plunger. You're not getting a, someone's dirty plunger. Yeah. But yeah, it essentially works like that. You just agitate it, and then you spin it. I don't know if you all saw my video on Instagram. That's essentially what it was. Like, you could put it on a rope. You can put this on a rope and then twist it and then it spins naturally. That's how you get a spin cycle out of it. Or if you have the forearm strength, you can just turn it. <laughs> yeah, that's how it works. And then, um, yeah, if you all enjoyed this class, uh, you know, I'll be available to talk more about it. But you can always leave a review on our Google page at Eco Now Anaheim. Um, you can always check out our products there too. Try to inform our team on gray water recycling and composting. So any questions like that here in store it works. You can always DM us too. I'm always uh, ranting about this kind of stuff. But I think that's how all these products tie in together. You know, we're trying to save the environment by being package free. But there's more to it than just package free. The end of life on things. Um, you know, with what you consume, you have to get soap unless. Just be dirty. <laughs> yeah, thank you all for attending. Help yourself to some refills, and then we have our booth too um, on the side here at the green tent. And then let me just check in with these people in here, see who gets the free pint. Thank you. Yeah, of so course. I ask, like, what you said this is worm tea? Yeah, it's worm tea. Um, it's uh, okay. Let me just check in with this real quick. Yeah. All right, so I'm in the live. I'm taking a screenshot of whoever's present, and then I'm going to send the pint of worm tea, which you can see here. It's all the probiotics, living materials to benefit your garden or house plants, and it's concentrated, so I'll message you. All right, y'all have a good one.